Welcome to North Penn Television. I'm your chef, Cynthia Wood, and this is Meals You Can Make. The holiday season is in full swing, and we are going to show you some nice little hors d'oeuvres that you can use for any type of holiday or winter party, New Year's Eve, whatever you choose them for. We have, I think, four or five different recipes today. I have all my ingredients spread around, so if I look confused, I, I just may be confused. We're going to start with one that's very simple, but it takes a little while in the oven because you're using bacon and you don't want that to not be completely cooked. You could par cook it, but why take the extra step? What I have chosen to do instead is take the package of bacon and cut it into thirds so that you have a piece of bacon that's you know manageable and if you wrap it around your prune it's not going to be so overlapped that the inside layer won't get cooked completely now I've done these for a lot of different people for a lot of different occasions and they're the first appetizer to go um, the funny thing is though you don't want to tell people that they're prunes or they won't eat them so I just always say that it's fruit wrapped in bacon and what you want to do is have some toothpicks handy and you take your prune and you're going to wrap it like that and then anchor it with a toothpick and this also makes it easier for people to pick it up and eat it I'm going to do a couple of these and then I'll pull my cookie sheet over to put them on these can get you have to they do take a little while in the oven because as I said of the bacon but they can tend to uh, burn a little bit because of the bacon also. The grease in the bacon comes out. So if you would like to, you can squirt your um, baking sheet with some non-aerosol cooking spray so that it makes cleanup a little easier. Now I have my oven set at 350 and everything I'm putting into the oven will be able to um, survive at that temperature. So we should be okay. All right, let me just squirt my pan a little. And we'll start laying these out. You don't have to have them too far apart as if you were baking cookies, but you do want to have them far enough apart that the heat can circular, um, circulate around each one. So this is a little time consuming. You can do this the night before. I don't think I'd do it much more than a day before because you don't really want raw bacon sitting in your refrigerator. Um, open to the elements. Most of the recipes, the one that, um, one of the ones that we're doing today actually needs to be done the night before and we'll go over that when we get to that one. But most of these can be prepped ahead of time so that you're not, um, as I used to be when I first started entertaining, running around five minutes before company's coming and uh, trying to do things in the kitchen. I mean, sometimes, depending on what the occasion is, it doesn't matter if you're out in the kitchen. As long as you have some nibblies for people to have as soon as they get there, easy stuff, snack mix, things like that, and then you can put the um, hot hors d'oeuvres on when you're ready. But they should be ready as far as prep-wise. You don't want to be out in the kitchen all night. A party's meant for you to have fun, too. Okay. We'll just do one sheet of these. The other thing is, too, if you're a fan of chicken livers, you could cut open your prune and put a chicken liver in. Poach the chicken livers off first in a little bit of wine, and then you can put them inside your prune and wrap it in the bacon. And that's a devil on horseback. An angel on horseback is an oyster um, wrapped in bacon. Lots of things wrapped in bacon. Another nice thing to wrap with bacon is um, shrimp. You brush it with a little barbecue sauce. That's really yummy. Okay, we're just about done. And as you can see, you can make pretty many out of, this isn't even a full package, um, a full pound package of bacon, and I already have one cookie sheet, and I have a good two, four, six, probably 20 slices left, and probably the same amount of prunes. But we're just gonna do one sheet for now, and I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then we'll move on to our next one. If I can wipe my hands off quickly. Now this recipe is one that we've already started. This is the one that you need to make the night before. And I have it in my magic cabinet here. This is really nice. It's called Mexican caviar, but it has no caviar in it. What you'll need to do is get um, eight ounces of black olives and chop them 
the green chilies, they're in the ethnic food aisle. Um, they come in little four and a quarter, I think, ounce jars. You need two of those and you dice those up or you can buy them chopped, depending on how much time you don't have. And you need two green onions, you wanna chop that and then you use two tomatoes. Well, I couldn't find any nice tomatoes when I was at the grocery store, so I got plums, so I doubled it. I used four because they're smaller. And what else is in here? Three tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of red wine vinegar, and then two cloves of garlic, which you mash like we did before with the blade of the knife, just pound on them. And then what you do is you mix all of this up together and you let it macerate, which means it sits in its own juices and the oil and vinegar, and the flavors will blend together overnight. And it really has a great smell to it. And it's pretty yummy too. And you can serve this with any kind of tortilla chip or Frito scoop. You need something that has a little bit of space because it is kind of chunky. And then I garnished this with our scallion brushes, which we made before. And with these, all you do is take the end of the scallion and run your knife blade down and then soak it in ice water in the refrigerator and it will bloom like that. So that's our garnish and that's our Mexican caviar. So that's really a handy little thing to have around. And this is the kind of thing that you could put out right away when your guests get there because it's already done. And then bring the hot hors d'oeuvres out later. So I'm just gonna hide that back here again. And then we will start with our asparagus roll-ups. Now. This is Pepperidge Farm party bread, and it's the same size, basically, as a regular loaf of bread, but the slices are much, much thinner. This comes in wheat or white. If you have an electric knife, it works really well. If you don't, any kind of nice serrated blade will work. And what we're going to do is cut our crusts away. So I'm just gonna take this whole stack and cut those off. And then, I looked for fresh asparagus and it wasn't very pretty. So I ended up getting the petite frozen asparagus spears. Um, if they're available, use those. If you have to use canned, don't make the recipe because they're just too mushy. So now we have some bread. I'll cut these two. I don't know how many spears we have. I didn't count them out, so we'll just make sure we have enough bread on hand. And then what we're going to do is we have about three ounces of cream cheese and about three ounces of crumbled blue cheese. And don't go out to a really expensive cheese counter and buy, buy blue Costello or something like that. Just go to the grocery store and buy the, um, I think it's Treasure Cove, and it comes already crumbled, and it's a lot less expensive that way than buying really, really good. I mean, Blue Costello is wonderful blue cheese. It's like butter, it melts in your mouth. But you don't want to do that for this kind of a recipe because it's just not necessary. Now we have butter in a pan on the stove, and I am going to melt that down because we're going to have to brush these with melted butter when we're done. And what we're going to do is I have my blue cheese and my cream cheese here. And I'll see if I can do it with a spoon and if not, I might have to use my hand. You want it to be at room temperature because it makes it easier to blend. So we're just going to smush this kind of all together. And you can really smell the blue cheese. And if you're not that wild about blue cheese, um, change the proportions. Instead of having three ounces of both, have four ounces of the cream cheese and only uh, two ounces of the blue cheese. You do need the blue cheese though because it gives it a little bit of a kick. And we'll mix this up. And then what we're going to do, it really could be a little softer even because we don't want it to tear the bread. I've already blanched my asparagus, and if you're not sure what that means, you drop it into boiling water for about a minute, if that, depending on the thickness of your asparagus. Pull it right out of the hot water and drop it into cold water or water with ice actually in it, and it stops the cooking process. And that way, your asparagus stays nice and green, and, um, and it's more al dente, and it's not so squishy. Okay, let's see. Now. 
I'm going to do this right on the countertop. You want to kind of flatten your bread a little bit, but you don't want to pound it or it's going to stick to the counter and it's going to rip and that's not going to be useful. So a little cheese on me. Just going to flatten these. And the nice thing about this is, depending on the uh, size of your asparagus spears, you can cut these into two, or you can leave them as one big piece. And I think, too, it depends on how many people you're having for your party, or um, these even make nice sandwiches in the afternoon for tea. So if you leave them in one long piece, it's a little bit more substantial looking anyway. I mean, it's the same amount if they eat two little ones or one big one. So we'll start with this many, however many that is. Now, we're going to take some of our cheese and plop it on here. And I am going to actually spread this with my fingers because it's not going to be as rough on the bread. Hopefully, we'll have less tearing. So we'll just drop some of these on here. Like I said, this can be done the night before, too. You could actually roll these up and uh, stick them in the fridge overnight and then right on the cookie sheet if you have space and then pull them out the next day and pop them in the oven because they don't take very long. Okay, now I'll just flatten some of these out. Might need a little bit more on that one. I'll swipe it from there. Whoop, piece of bread broke. Another piece of bread broke. Oh. Well, I'm batting 500. I'm two for two. Whoop, my batting average is going down quickly. It really doesn't matter if they get a little crack because if, if the crack is in the center of the bread, then that's where you can slice it into two pieces if you're going to serve it that way. All right. I feel like I'm playing with uh, Play-Doh. Going back to my childhood. There we go. Now, what you want to do is take a piece of asparagus. And if it's way too long, you could even cut it in half. But you want to leave the nice end of the asparagus on there, the tip. And we're going to lay it diagonally. If you can see this, I don't know whose camera can see that. And then what we're going to hopefully do is roll this. And if we can only roll it once, that's OK. My bread's crumbling a little bit. So then what we're going to do is lay that on our cookie sheet. If I can reach it. And then we're going to brush it with melted butter when they're all on the pan. So I think what we'll do is we'll take a really quick break so I can do this. And, um, and we'll be right back. What would you do if you had to choose between the buffalo and the giraffes, between a flower or an elephant? What would you choose? What if you had to decide between a hundred-year-old tree and a million-year-old beach? between drinking clean water or breathing clean air. Would you make the right choice? Would there be a right choice? Now there's a way to help. Not just one, but all these things. Earthshare, the world's leading environmental groups working together. It's one choice we can all live with. Ask your employer about workplace giving. Welcome back. 
Well, I have my asparagus rolled up with its cheese filling, and I'm going to brush this. And my bread has cracked a couple of times, but it's going to get pretty toasty in the oven anyway, so I don't think it'll be that critical. They just might not look as nice, but they're still going to taste as well. Um, but the thing is, too, my bread did come out of the freezer. Um, sometimes it's hard to find the wheat flavor at the grocery store. Not every store even carries it, but they all carry the white. So I had the wheat in the freezer, and it, um, it's not as flexible. So if you can get it fresh and do it the day before, that's good, rather than having it in the freezer for a week. I mean, bread keeps as long as you toast it, and that's what I mean. It's going to taste fine. It's going to look okay. It's just that they kind of broke up a little bit more than I would have liked them to. So now I'm brushing them with some butter that I've melted. And I'm going to pop those in the oven. And our bacon and prune is coming along well. Now, for our next one, what we're going to do is we have some Pepperidge Farm pastry sheets. And I've had this in the refrigerator for a couple of minutes rather than the freezer so that it's a little bit more um, pliable. They will crack because they fold them in half before they put them in the box, which I don't understand why. But what we're going to do is just kind of smooth that out and keep our fingers crossed. Now, this hors d'oeuvre, I'm sure you've had at parties. Sometimes it's done with the little tiny hot dogs, and they call it, um, oh, what do they call them? Whatever, party franks. I call mine wild weenies because they have a lot of flavor. And what we have are some cracker crumbs, which we've crunched up, broken up, any kind of cracker. These are actually a round butter crisp, but saltines work just as well. We're just doing it to give it a little bit of texture. Then we have some Cajun spices, and that's why I call them wild, because they do have some flavor, some zippiness. And we are just going to take about oh, a tablespoon, two tablespoons. And you want it to change the color of the cracker crumb. So that's a little red, so I'm going to put a little more in. Not quite a tablespoon, maybe a half. So about two and a half tablespoons. And that's what we're going to roll them in. I'm sorry that you cannot see through the bowl because then it'd be nicer for you. But then we have some beef franks. And what we're going to do is basically measure. And you don't want to cut it to the very end. So put your pinky there at the edge of the puff pastry and then put the hot dog against that so that you'll have a little bit to twist. So basically, you can just cut off one section of this puff pastry. So that's what we're going to do for now. And then we have, uh, actually, I have two eggs that I have beaten up and put a little bit of water into. That's called an egg wash. And you seal pastry, and you can also brush pastry with it. It makes it get a little bit um, brown in the oven, makes it a nice golden color. And it also is going to help us seal these shut. So what we're going to do is roll this over once so that it's covered. But you want to give it a little bit, maybe just like an eighth of an inch, so that you'll have something to glue it onto, and then cut it. OK, that's one. And we will glue that together. We might only get two out of this. Or maybe a third. Because we also have that funny long piece that maybe we can play around with, too. And I'm going to set those there so I can have a little bit more room. It's just not going to be quite enough. Maybe if I work with it. Puff pastry is a little thicker. Phyllo dough is like working with uh, something thinner than tissue paper. Um, and that's a little impossible. This, we actually might be able to camouflage. And then we'll take this one, and we'll go this way. Waste not, want not. And then the last piece, if you wanted to, you could just put it in on the cookie sheet and bake it, and it'll puff up into a nice little um, box. And then you can lift the top half off and fill it with something else. 
seafood Newburg or something. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is actually just stick my finger in the egg wash. You can use a pastry brush, but, and then run it down the edge. And then you're gonna fold this over so that it sticks. And then we're gonna work with it like this and pinch it. And then we're gonna twist those ends. So the person that gets the end piece is really only gonna get puff pastry and not much hot dog. Not much wild weenie. And then After we get them all done, I'm gonna roll them, but that's what comes next. We'll leave that there quickly. Roll that. Make sure both my ends are even. There's two, this one. Actually, I think maybe we'll, we'll fix this guy up the right way. And cut off, if it's too much, you can cut it away. Puff pastry is not available in every grocery store either. I have found that you can usually find it at Genorities. If you can't find it everywhere else, they usually have it. Or if they, you have a Pepperidge Farm store near you, they, of course, would have it since it's their product. Maybe I can use this to stick this end together. And then we are going to brush the whole thing with egg wash. I'm going to bring my cracker crumbs over. I have one lonely hot dog left. You do get two sheets of puff pastry in a box, though. So we've got four um, wild weenies out of one sheet. So you could make eight. And these are going to be actually cut into single serving sizes. And if you wanted to, you could anchor it with uh, toothpicks. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then we're going to drop it into our breadcrumb. Don't stick your wet hand into there, because then you're going to get coated with breadcrumbs. So we have our, our actually cracker crumbs. Our cracker crumbs and our Cajun spices, we're going to roll that around. And that's one. I'll brush this one. And this is also good if you have little kids at home. Once you've washed it with the egg wash, let them put their hands in the bowl and stir that crumb mixture around. It's a lot of fun. You just want to make sure you cover all the puff pastry so that it's all seasoned. That's two. And I think I'll finish these up while we take a really quick break and we'll be back and they'll be in the oven. unadulterated energy. You have no choice but movement. You aren't acted on. You are action. You have the power to make the world a better place. You already know how to do it. Volunteer now for the American Red Cross. Call your local chapter for details. Your parents are always bugging you to get out of the house and get some exercise. But you've got your own way of doing things. You're your own person. You don't need to follow the crowd or the rules. And the last people you want to be like are your parents. Johnny, tell them what they want. Welcome back. 
Well, while you were gone, our wild weenies came out of the oven, and this is how they look. The puff pastry puffed up nicely. The frank gets nice and browned. And then for our dip for this, we have Dijon mustard and honey. And you want it to be the consistency. I really don't know the measurements because in all the times I've made it, I don't measure. You want it to be like that. So it's more honey than mustard, um, unless you want it more mustardy. But do it to your taste. I like it a little bit on the sweeter side. Now, we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. I have taken shrimp and dredged them, and that means pulled them through flour that's mixed with uh, a little salt and pepper, because shrimp really, people tend to overcook it. You don't want to overcook it. It makes it rubbery. So we've done that to season it just with a little bit of salt and pepper in the flour, tossed it in some of the melted butter that we had from our asparagus rolls, and we have it in the frying pan, so we're just going to actually it's almost like fried shrimp, but it's not as heavily breaded. And we're going to put this onto our baguette. And what I did last night so that it would, um, the flavors would meld is I took some of the fresh ginger that we worked with a week or so ago and mixed it in with mayonnaise. I chopped it up very finely. Now what I'm doing is I'm spreading it on my baguette. And then when this shrimp comes out of here and it's all nice and hot, I am going to sink it into this nice gingered mayonnaise and then cut these into bite-sized pieces because you don't want, well actually I have served this for dinner on Christmas Eve with some nice homemade soup and just everybody got big chunks of this and it was yummy. But if you want to do it as an hors d'oeuvre you need to cut it into finger-sized pieces. So I'm just going to spread a little bit of that around. But it's really better for the ginger to sit in it overnight. Now some of my shrimp is ready. So I'm going to pull it out. You want it to be translucent in the center. If it's still gray, well actually that is right on the edge. But if it's still like this, it isn't finished. The ones that are pink are finished. So we're going to do that. I'll let the other ones sit for a minute while I cut this. And so we have our Mexican caviar that we're serving with tortilla chips. We have our prunes wrapped in bacon, our lovely asparagus and blue cheese roll-ups. We have our wild weenies with honey mustard dip. And here we have our ginger shrimp toast. So as you can see, these are recipes that you can definitely make. And now for everyone here at North Penn Television, we would like to wish you a really happy, healthy holiday season and a wonderful new year. And we hope we'll see you back here next time. Algebra. <laughs> Algebra. 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 If no one's explained how algebra, geometry, and calculus can improve your future, demand that you be told. Call NACME. We'll tell you. Do you think you have the power to change the world? I can change the world one child at a time. I know I can make a difference in those children's lives. I teach. I teach. Yes, they're teachers, but to the kids they reach, they're heroes. I teach. Do you have the power to wake up young minds, to be someone's hero? Teach, to make an impact on our future. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher, be a hero.